So hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's information session. Uh, my name is Elena. I am a student recruitment associate at McGill University. So I host information and admission webinars to students. Um, so today we will be presenting the semester at McGill program. Um, the session will be hosted also by my colleague uh, Effie, who is the person behind this new program. So I'll give her a moment here to introduce herself. Hello, everybody. My name is Effie Dracopoulos. I'm Senior Academic Partnerships Advisor for the School of Continuing University. I'm also faculty lecturer, and I look after the semester at McGill program, which I will be telling you about in a moment. So for today's session, we will be giving you a quick introduction about McGill University and um, the School of Continuing Studies. We will also be talking about Montreal. Then uh, my colleague Effie will be giving you all of the information regarding our new program, Semester at McGill. And we will end this session by giving you different ways to contact us if ever you have any questions. So a quick introduction of McGill University. So McGill was founded in 1821. We're one of the oldest universities in Canada and one of the most recognized in the world. We have a very large campus in Montreal. We have a total of nine faculties and 15 schools. And for last year's academic year, we have welcomed over 40,000 students in over 300 programs. And 30.1% of our students were international students. Over the years, we have made the list of different world university ranking systems for higher education. And on the screen here, we have included our three most recent rankings. We've recently been placed 42nd already for 2021, according to Times Higher Education. So the new program semester at McGill is offered at the School of Continuing Studies. Um, so we offer a wide range of programs. We offer short-term credit-based business and management programs. We also offer short-term non-credit programs with transcript in different fields, language, computer science, information technology. And we have welcomed over 7,000 students and 72% of our students are working professionals. All of our courses are also taught by active professionals in the field. So 90% of our instructors have an active practice and they work very hard to bring their expertise, their knowledge, their experience to the classrooms. It's important for us to mention that all of our courses, whether they are credit or non-credit, undergo the same approval and quality control process as any other course that is offered across all faculties at McGill. So I'll be showing you some images of our campus. So the first one that you can see here on the top left are the eroded gates. This is the main entrance to our downtown campus. The next image here is the Faculty of Arts. So right behind the eroded gates is the path that leads to the Faculty of Arts. Um, it is the most uh, recognized and most photographed building on our campus. Usually when you think of McGill University, this is the first faculty that comes to mind. So this is the Faculty of Arts. Next here, we have another angle of our campus and you can see one of our three museums. This is the Red Path Museum with the red banners. So this is one of the museums that we have on campus. And finally here, we have McTavish Street. Uh, this is where you will find most of our offices for student services. Now, just to give you an idea of where we are located. So our campus is located in downtown Montreal. Montreal is located in the province of Quebec. We are between the city of Quebec and Ottawa. Ottawa being the capital of Canada with the star here on the map. And we are also very close to the border with the United States right here. I also want to take a moment and show you a few images of Montreal. So the first top left here is the view of downtown Montreal from the lookout on, on Mont Royal. Mont Royal is the mountain that is located right behind our campus. Next image here is the old port of Montreal. 
you will notice here downtown Montreal and Mont Royal right here. So our campus is located right between the two right here. Now, two very popular tourist attractions in Montreal, we have the Biosphere. If you're interested in exhibits uh, related to the environment, social integration, culture, this is very popular here in Montreal, as well as St. Joseph's Oratory that is located on Mont Royal. Uh, the St. Joseph's Oratory welcomes over 2 million visitors every year. Um, so it's a very popular tourist attraction here as well in Montreal. Now I will let uh, my colleague Effie give you all the information for our new program semester at McGill. Thank you, Elena. The semester at McGill is a revised program that includes uh, that could include a service learning component. It's a study abroad semester long program for international students. So if you'd like to participate you must obtain permission from your academic supervisor to study abroad at McGill University for one semester as part of your degree program at your home institution. You want to do this to make sure that the courses you take will count towards your degree. In addition to the courses you'll be taking, you'll develop soft skills and competencies that will help you in your future and in your life in general. And some skills are uh, some examples of skills are critical thinking, problem solving, conflict avoidance and resolution, cross-cultural communication, um, strategic communication, time management, and the list goes on. This is just a, a little sample. Uh, some details about the program itself. It's 16 weeks long and it's structured um, in a way that will give you some time courses to to take a break and study and, and review and go on. So it begins with an orientation week where you have orientation activities. Um, halfway through the program, there's a study break and then there, there's an exam period. So at the top, you see 16 weeks. The first week is orientation, then six weeks of courses, one week of study break, another six weeks of courses, and then two weeks of, of exam period. Um, there is an optional experiential service learning component for those of you who are required to do some form of um, volunteering or, or internship. This isn't an internship, it's a volunteer experience, uh, but it may count towards internship requirements at your institution and important to check with your academic director. The program itself has two tracks. Um, as you will see in the table on the right, the lower right, um, track, um, there's track one and two, and, and the difference is in the number of hours uh, of, that, that are included in the program. Again, you will select that with your academic director depending on your, your degree requirements. Um, you have options. You can take a project management course, the service learning course and experience, or just extra courses to make up the credits that you will need. Courses are offered in the daytime and sometimes they may be offered in the evening. It's rare, although it's not impossible. Um, whichever the case, you will be in very good hands with our expert instructors. And uh, there will be some extracurricular activities that are optional. And as Elena mentioned, we're very close to, to our country's capital, Ottawa. We're very close to Quebec City as well, the capital of our province. So there will be excursions organized to those two cities, as well as other types of excursions and activities, which you can opt to buy into. The program itself, for the time being, targets three fields, business man and management, social sciences and humanities, computer science and IT. We will be adding to this later on, but for the upcoming year, uh, this is the slate. Some examples of courses that you could take under business and management are international business and introduction to agile project management. 
uh, examples of social sciences and humanities courses are intercultural communication and globalization, introduction to international organizations. And an example of computer science and IT courses is cloud networking and, and security, basic or advanced HTML and CSS. There is a, a full list of offerings, uh, which I will show you uh, in the next couple of slides. So all of our courses are non-credit and are 30 contact hours long, uh, except for the experiential service learning course, which is 48 hours long, and the short project management course, which is 15 hours long. And that's why we offer you these options depending on the number of uh, hours that you need to complete within a semester to get full credit at your university. So when you factor in the time that you'll spend on assignments and other course related activities outside of class time, um, these numbers double if not triple. So be sure to plan your time accordingly and also to uh, explain this to your academic directors. Most courses are available individually while some are available as bundled courses. This means that you can take for, for bundled courses, it means that you can take the first course, which is a prerequisite to the second course. And so if you select to take a bundled course, you will be able to register for the two courses. Um, courses are available to all students. There are no prerequisites, except for maybe some of the computer science and technology courses. So please do check the descriptions carefully when the time comes to make sure that you have the prerequisites if such prerequisites are required. Um, and also make sure that your institution approves your course selection if you want to get credit for the courses back home. I can't stress that enough. Um, you'll be able to select your courses uh, from a full list um, that we have. The number of courses you will take depend on the option you choose whether it's service learning or project management or just extra courses. So you'll have to select at least three courses and may need as many as eight courses depending on your university degree requirements. And once the registration period has been completed, we will provide you with the finalized list of courses as well as your course schedule it's important to give us second and third choices in your course selections to make sure that um, if, if one course doesn't run, at least there will be another course that you're interested in that we can register you in. So here's a list of individual courses that we will be offering in the upcoming year. And here is a list of the bundled courses that we'll be offering in the upcoming year. So, for example, if you take current challenges and global food security, you could also take fundamentals of sustainable food systems. What you can't do is take fundamentals of sustainable food systems on its own because there may be prerequisites there. So you would have to take these courses together. And this is what we mean by bundled. Now, if you're interested in experiential service learning, in volunteering, or if you need it as part of your degree requirements, this is a great place to do this type of volunteering uh, work. The difference between volunteering and service learning is that your volunteer experience is directly related to your academic uh, studies. So there will be a follow up and that's why you would register in the experiential service learning course because your instructor would help you every step of the way in identifying goals, what it is that you would want to learn as part of your volunteer experience. And remember, we're talking soft skills. If it's cross-cultural communication, for example, 
or or um, intercultural conflict avoidance or whatever the case may be. These goals would be identified with your instructor and your other classmates. And then you would be placed in an organization that uh, you would like to volunteer in. So you would answer a questionnaire and then select from a list of possible organizations. And if you look at the, the bottom right of this slide, you'll see it says sample organizations Welcome Hall Mission, Sun Youth, St. Antoine's Community Center, Shield of Athena, Data for Good, and Vero, Red Cross, Greenpeace, and so on. These are just samples, but please feel free to go on the websites of these organizations to take a look at what they do and what you could possibly do to help them. Um, so you will have your academic study. It will be all the courses that you take, including the service learning course. You will have practical experience um, because of your volunteering work, and you will be involved in the community, again, through your volunteering work. The pictures on the right can give you an idea of the types of service learning opportunities you can have through this program. You can work directly with the public, if that's what you would like to do, or help an organization behind the scenes um, with their website or social media initiatives, for example, or with event planning, financial reporting, their PR communiques, even their governance. It, uh, we will try to match you with the organization that um, is also looking for the types of skills that you can provide to them and, and the type of help you can provide. We will make sure that it's a good fit for both you and the organization so that it, it's an excellent experience for everybody all around. Now, what do you need to participate in this program? You have to be at least 18 years old and you should be enrolled in an accredited institution. If this isn't the case, if you have just recently graduated and you, you're looking for a gap year experience, please contact us. Uh, we'll see how we can help you. But overall, students are usually enrolled in academic studies at a university um, and have uh, similar interests, um, common goals, and so it creates a very cohesive cohort each time. You also need to have um, minimum English language level proficiency to participate in this program. And these are some of the tests, the international test scores that we accept. Uh, if you have equivalents, if you don't have the TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, the CEFR, and you have an equivalent, please don't hesitate to send it to us. Um, and we will let you know if you qualify to, to participate. And below you see the dates. So you have until July 1st to apply for the fall session and until October 1st to apply for the winter 2022 session. The fall session begins on August 30th and ends on December 17th. And the winter session begins on January 10th and ends on April 22nd. It will be our pleasure to welcome you here. You will be supported from the moment you arrive until the moment you leave. We have an excellent team um, that will help you with uh, finding accommodations, with um, even making friends. Whatever your needs are, we will be here for you from the beginning until the end. Uh, and we didn't mention that Montreal is a very safe city. It is a cosmopolitan city. So you, you have to be careful as you would be in your own city or town, but overall it's a very safe city. So we welcome you to Montreal and we look forward to having you at McGill University as one of our students. Thank you. Thank you, Effie. Um, so if you would like more information about this new opportunity, you can visit our website uh, right here. 
Um, and of course, as Effie mentioned, if ever you have any questions or you need further clarifications on what was presented today, feel free to contact us at shortprograms.scs at miguel.ca. It would be our pleasure to answer your questions. Um, you can also take a moment to complete our student interest form. It takes less than two minutes to complete. Um, this is a very good way to keep in touch with us. You could let us know who you are, what you are interested in, uh, what are your objectives, what are, why are you interested with this program, and we'll be able to keep in touch with you, send you updates about this new program, um, and answer your questions, of course. Um, so feel free to contact us either by email or through this interest form uh, for more details about this program. So I'd like to thank everyone for listening to our information session today, and I hope to be able to welcome you next fall at Miguel or next winter. Thank you.